I would expect everyone now to have a working uh, e-learning account. And some of you, mostly the first year students, you have CUB email, okay? So you will need a CUB email uh, just in case you don't have one, but in the meantime, you can even still use your personal email. Those that do not have accounts can always uh, write to us um aratumsime at cub.ac.ug um n kamwesiga at cub.ac.ug m mutebi at cub.ac.ug and um the emails are coming it's very important that you're able to reach us we also have other avenues on which you can reach us um we have the helpdesk.cub.ac.ug. That's the platform where you can send us a ticket and we log it so that we're able to follow up with you. It is helpdesk.cub.ac.ug. So you can also make use of that platform just in case. Uh, when we were doing the other trainings, we shared our contacts. Uh, some of you have them, you can share with your friends so that they're able to reach us. Um, I think Nicola should type for us the emails and the contacts that members need to have so that they're able to reach us. So going forward, we are going to start. Uh, we have created a course, Assessments and Feedback, that's the course. It contains, we have put there, different assessments that you should be able to attempt as a test. We are going to go through it with you. Then after we expect all of you to go and attempt them to get a feel, get a feel of what happens exactly. Yeah. So we are going to illustrate everything. How do you access that uh, particular class? Uh, how do you enroll into the course? But most of you should know by now how to enroll. You first enroll in that course, STUD 1104. Some people are saying they can't see me. Uh, you're going to see us because we're going to share our screens um, in a bid to cut on your data. That's why we want you to keep your, to keep your videos off just in case so that you, cut on the data costs. That's why you need to keep your videos off. And um, yeah, so going forward, enroll into that course, you should say we have put some, some assessments for testing, for trial, okay? Because if you're going to take an online test, it can take different formats. Some of the lectures will set the multiple choice questions. Um, some will set the, the essay type questions. So we would expect you to be conversant. If it is an essay type question, how do I approach it? How do I upload it? If it is a multiple choice uh, kind of uh, assessment, what will happen exactly? Yeah. So we are going to even show you how, when you're using your phone, how could you, for example, if you're doing math or chemistry or physics, how would you uh, maybe use your phone to upload that if you wrote it on paper? Then those who are doing the essay, uh, you know, languages, the rest, if you type your document, how do you, uh, how do you upload it? How do you submit it? In which format? PDF, Word, whatever it is. But we we need you to be able to to be able to submit. And remember, there are a lot of fears you people have. You know the time, the internet, uh, all that. We are going to ensure that you people have enough time. I will give an example. If you're given eight hours for a three-hour exam that means you have to do it in three hours you have five hours to ensure that you've submitted then also those of you that um those of you that uh, could have challenges if you are doing um 
the exam after some after those hours some of you may need to scan it just if, in case you are doing like a math type once you scan it then you'll need to um, you'll need to you'll need to upload it so we're going to go through that show you step by step how you achieve that what do you use to scan how do you scan after scanning how do you uh, locate what you have scanned attach it to your submission within the e-learning platform but the most important thing for all of you is ensure you have enrolled in all your courses all your courses ensure you have enrolled if there is a course which does not allow you to enroll please let us know we open it up for you if your lecture hasn't opened up yet so 128 participants it's a good number more should be coming in uh we shall maybe maybe arrange another training but this one we are getting there so in the interest of time i don't want you people to be worried about you know how do i submit i you know you have to 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 be shaken you have to to worry all you need to know is you will have time but you have to also manage your time well if you get your timetable plan accordingly because your department will be the one to share the timetable once they give you the timetable plan how many hours do i have i'm doing renyakitara i'm given eight hours i have to start on time so that i have a lot of time to polish the work at the same time submit it if you get challenges that is still a lot of time to get to us to help you okay it's a lot of time for you to get to us so that we are able to help you okay so feel free to contact us on the on the emails you are given i think you are given emails and um you are given the emails yeah the whole team there uh you should be able to reach over to us you should be able to call you have our numbers we shared them many times uh, reach out to us because it's critical we help you submit by all means we have to help you submit so we'll be available throughout the day the time you're doing your exams so people are saying courses like mechanical they are unable to enroll so all you will need to do is you saw those emails up there just drop us an email for the course codes the course codes that are locked because i remember recently we got those of uh, engineering and your lecturers have actually tried to upload and as well open them so you let us know those ones then i will make sure and my team we open them for you to join um all right all right um people are not hearing please just try to work it out as we also try to ensure that we we get the objective of today's training the objective of today's training is when you leave this training ensure you have understood how to submit work how to attempt uh, an online one some will be live like you, you are doing it online there's no offline but you'll have enough time to do it the good thing with the one of online the mc2 and the rest you people will uh, it will auto mark itself and those marks can come uh, right after you have completed or after the time period that was set. If the exam was set for eight hours, you may not get your marks after the exactly one, once you are finished. But after the eight hours, your marks will show up. Or some of them, your marks will show up exactly the time you finish. Those of us who are going to do the essay type where we submit, then you will have to wait for the lecturer to go through, read, award a mark and that mark will come to your to your cabville app or your e-learning account okay so depending on how they want to do it but at least some of you have tested how it works so you know what i'm talking about those that have not you are going to test it we have created a course for those who are just joining the course is assessments and it is stud stored 1104 STUD 1104, you note it, 
So we have created there the different types of, of ass assessments to help you practice how to do it. When the time comes, how will you do it? When you encounter challenges, we help you now. So once we help you now and you know what to do, that means that time it will be easy for you to do. And that is why we are doing this, that we have created a course, okay? Assessments and feedback. So that is the name of the course. And the code is STUD, STUD 1104. Just you type it as one word when you're searching for it. Assessments and feedback. Then when you enroll into that course, um, in the page, you'll see cultural heritage exam one. Then you'll see computer literacy MCQ exam two. Computer literacy MCQ and SE. Then you see general knowledge feedback withheld okay so by feedback we mean getting getting your marks um any form of say good work whatever compliment is withheld until further notice like until maybe we complete so like mcq and the sc you find you have done the mcq the system will automark the lecturer has to mark the sc uh, manually then the all the marks are computed now in the system so we find that all your marks won't come at once, okay? But now the first one, exam two, computer literacy, you complete, you get your mark there and then. So that will be a mix. So we want you to get a feel, okay? We want you to get a feel of what it is. Mostly for those who have not done it before. People in computing, I'm sure you have done it. People, some people in uh, taking, I think, doing ELS, um, most of you uh, have tried the first option, the exam one, where you submit a real file. These others, you may not need to submit a real file. Either you type within, and uh, then others are automatic, the others are manually marked by the lecture within the platform. So that particular course unit is for you to test. Try it. And the moment you fail here, we help you. Once you do it here, that means you just have to go, keep relaxed, wait for your exam. When the AR announces, if he communicates that it is there, you know what to do. At least we wanted to be ahead. Uh, we wanted everyone to be ahead so that we're able to manage if the time actually comes. So with that communication, I think I'm going to, to hand over to Michael Mutebi to be able to take over as I also get back in the background to help answer some of your questions within the chat room. So put your questions in the chat room. I should be, myself and Nicola should be able to help you out. Now, we are going to the actual practical bit. As a student, okay? As a student, how do I approach this? So the practical bit is starting just now with Michael Mudevi. So Michael, please you take over as I go back in the background. Thank you. Uh, all right. My name is Michael Mutevi, and I'm going to take you through the practical session of doing assessments on the e-learning platform. So I'm going to Rewind a bit to the very beginning. Let me share my screen. <clears throat> All right, so that is my screen there. I am currently at uh, the home page of the e-learning platform. I think by now you all know how to get here. Uh, the URL or the address is uh, elearning.cup.se.ug. You put this in a browser and you get there. So let me. Uh... Okay, so. You log in as usual, you click the login button. This is a desktop view, and most of you have a 
a mobile phone, you use you access the platform using a mobile phone. So I'll be alternating showing you how you can access using the, the mobile phone as well. So this is a, a desktop uh, a computer a computer's view. So you log in by clicking this login button and then you put your credentials, your username and password, then you click login. Now on a mobile phone, this is a mobile phone, I believe you can see the mobile phone. Yeah, so with a mobile phone, the layout is a bit different. There's a padlock at the very top, instead of the login uh, button, there's a padlock. So you click on that padlock and it will bring the form where you put your username, uh, and the password, and then you click login. So in, uh, let me log in here. Log in here as well. So <clears throat> now I'm logged in. Currently, I don't have uh, a second. Currently, I don't have any course available. I'm not enrolled in any course. And as you can see, under my courses, there's, there's, there are no courses listed. So I'm going to enroll into that course, which we're going to be using to demonstrate uh, assessments. So like Robert said, the course is STUD1104. So usually we search, you click, you click this search icon here. On the mobile phone, on the, uh, on the mobile phone that it's right next to, to your profile uh, icon. There's a search icon here. When you click, you, you search STUD1104. One one zero four, and then you click search. So this this will uh, it will give you one result, one result uh, assessments and feedback, and this is the code STUD one one zero four. So there is a brief summary here talking about the course. So when you read through the summary, it can help you to be certain that this is the right course. Assessments are the way that your lecturer determines whether you are meeting the goals of your study. So these are lecturers, Michael Motevi and Nicholas Nkomesiga. And so far we have 29 students. 29 of you have enrolled successfully into this course. I'm also going to enroll by clicking enter this course. So when I enter the course on the desktop, let me also do this quickly. I enter the course. So when you when you click to enter, you get this page. This is the enrollments page, which uh, gives you confirmation details about the course. And when you're sure this is the right course, you click enroll now. So enroll now will scroll. It will take you down to the enrollment area where you click enroll me, the button that says enroll me. And with that, you are enrolled. And your 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 you redirected to the course page. And as you can see here, there's a notice that says you're enrolled in this course. Let me close that. So on the desktop, it's the same idea. I click enroll now, and then I'm, I'm taken to the enrollment area which says enroll me. I click, and I am enrolled. It's the same person, so the, the, the notice won't, won't appear this time. But now I'm enrolled in the course assessments and feedback. And as I can see here, there's an introduction that has been posted by the lecturer. The course is assessments and feedback, and this is the code. And this is a, a brief introduction to the course, which you can read through. So this, uh, the course is, is split into sections. There's an introduction, assignments, and tests. There are three sections. As you can see here under the, let me look at the mobile phone view. On the mobile phone view, this is the layout. It's slightly different from how it is in the desktop. You have uh, the introduction section, assignments, and the tests. 
And this one thing I want I want to to point out. You see, the layout has changed a bit from from uh, what some of you may have been used to before. There is the course. Uh, what do we call it? There is the course dashboard. There was before there was the word course dashboard where you can access your course dashboard, but now it is simply an icon. This here is a gear icon, and that gear icon. When you click on that gear icon, you get your course dashboard. The course dashboard gives you a summary of your course. You have uh, access to the to the brief, the name, the brief. You have access to your grades and access to your lecturers. You also have access to activities and assignments which are available within the course. So if I click assignments, this takes me directly to the assignments that are available in the course. We have exam one, culture heritage. And uh, if I go back here and I click quizzes, this will take me directly to all the quizzes or tests that are available in the system. So that is another quick way through the course dashboard. You can quickly go to the tests and, and assignments within, within your course. So going back to, to the course, uh, let me look at the mobile phone view that uh, everybody can follow. So you have uh, you have your assessments and feedback, and then this is the, the course dashboard. When you click, the course dashboard shows up. It looks like this on the mobile phone. You have your activities. You have access to your lectures and grades. So I can click this close here to get back to, to my course dashboard. And here I can also go back to my course dashboard. So now <clears throat> we're going to start looking. We're going to start off. I've gone back to the dashboard, which is a good thing actually. So now on my dashboard, I have my course STUD1101 listed in the navigation here. And under my recent access courses, I also have it. And also in the course overview, I also have it. So I can access my course even at the top here in the in this uh, I uh, drop down, I click assessments and feedback. So now that we're in the course, we're going to start off with the assignment section. So assignments are typically given for a period, uh, a long period, and tests are usually given for a short period and they are timed. So we're starting off with assignments. So the way you identify an assignment is by looking through and identifying this icon. There's an icon here with a, a hand holding a, a paper, like this one. Let me zoom in a bit. So this is what I'm talking about. You have a, a hand holding a paper. So this is a sign that this is an assignment. So we have an assignment here. It's called Exam 1, Culture Heritage. And below here, there's a, the question is displayed. Sometimes the question could be displayed. Sometimes it could not be displayed. But in this case, it's displayed. Write an essay of not less than 1,500 words about marriage in your culture. Submit your work in either Microsoft Word format or PDF format. So for you to do this, this assignment or this exam, you click on it. And when you click on it, you enter into the assignment. The title is repeated here, Culture Heritage. And the question is also repeated here. Let me go to the mobile phone view. and go to the assignment. This is how it looks like on a mobile phone. I click Culture Heritage. So I, I, I get the title again. It's Exam 1, Culture Heritage. 
and I have the question again. Write an essay of not less than 1,500 words about marriage in your culture. Submit your work in either Microsoft Word formats or PDF. So this is the assignment. When you Sometimes your lecturer can attach supporting documents. For example, the assignment may have a supporting document which has more details about how to go about doing the work. So this is a supporting document which you can download. Let me download it on the desktop. So I download the supporting document and when I open it, Microsoft Word, I can read and it's saying the same as the question, write an essay. So sometimes the supporting document would have more information about the, the assignment. So also sometimes the supporting document could be the real exam that you're supposed to take. So when you download, it's very important for you to, to realize that after, even after the question, there, there, if there is a supporting document, please download it and read what is there. So below here, you have your submission status. Uh, as you can see, your submission status is not attempted. Of course, we have not done the assignment yet. And we have also not been graded because we haven't done. So it, uh, your exam may have, uh, a, a, if it's an assignment, it will have a due date, a date when you are ideally supposed to have submitted your work. So you should take very keen note of this date because if you exceed this date, you're not going to be able to submit your work. So the, the due date is very important. Then the system helps to calculate for you the time you have remaining. In this case, I have eight days and 21 hours to the due date. So this is a... Uh, this is something to remind you of how much time you have left. I have not modified since I haven't done anything and there are no submission comments. Now, submission comments are a way that you communicate with your lecturer. Sometimes when you get, when you get your assignment, sometimes you may not understand something and you need some clarification from the lecturer. So you, you pass on your, your, communication to a lecturer regarding that particular exam using submission comments. So when I click submission comments here, as a student, I could perhaps maybe tell the lecturer to, uh, to, to send more supporting documents. Perhaps uh, that's just an example. because the question is not clear. So that is a message from me as a student. And when I click Save Comment, this comment is relayed to the teacher. So the teacher is going to be able to go to that assignment and they will see that Barbara Namotebi has sent a submission uh, comment. So this is a communication between you and the lecturer. Nobody else sees it. The students don't, see, other colleagues of yours wouldn't see it. It will just be uh, you and the lecturer that see it. Okay, so now those are the submission comments. We are going to be waiting for the lecturer's response. So for the time being, let's continue. So what happens here is that you have received the assignment, you have seen the question, and you have downloaded any supporting documents and read through. You should be at this point in position to be able to do the assignment that has been given to you, or the exam. You should be able to do the exam. Typically, you, you, you do it offline in, for example, Microsoft Word. Or for those of you who use mobile phones, use WPS. You do your work. And uh, when you're done doing your work and uh, you're still it, taking very keen note of the due date, 
you have your work in Microsoft Word or PDF. It's now time for you to submit. So to submit, you click Add Submission. If I go back to the mobile phone view. And I go back to the uh, to the assignment. This is how it looks like. Refresh here. Yeah. So this is my assign uh, my assignment. I can see I have one submission comment that I I wrote to the teacher. So I click add submission. So when I click add submission, going back here, when I click add submission, I'll see the question again and any supporting documents. I can at this point still download and read through. Now here we have we have this uh, file upload uh, form which allows us to upload our work. It says file submission. This this is what you use to submit your work. Disable annotation. I have disabled annotation. Yeah. Okay. All right. Sorry for that. Um. Let me just step back a bit. All right, we're, we're, now we're done with our work, we're now submitting. So to submit, you click Add Submission. There's an Add Submission button. So at this point, uh, I'm sorry for a distraction. At this point, we have, we are ideally supposed to have our work done. I am going to, when, you, when, you, when you're doing your work, there are some things that you have to, 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 to take note of. First of all, when you, when you when you're writing work in your document, you're supposed to indicate some information that is supposed to identify you with the work. You're supposed to put, for instance, your name so you're supposed to put your name in this case. And you're supposed to also indicate your registration number. So that is my registration number. So in your work, usually your lecturer will give you a particular format in which they, they work. They want their work presented, and they usually indi they can indicate that in the supporting documents, or they can talk to you and say, "We want our work in a particular format." But always you're supposed to put identifying information because. It helps to trace your work in case there's a complaint. So you make sure you always have your name and your registration number indicated on your work. So with that, you are done with your work. Let me... Okay, so now I have done my work and I'm ready to submit my work. So you go to the Add the Submission button and this Add Submission button will be there provided that the lecturer has uh, allowed submission. Sometimes the work would be there. For example, your lecturer posts the assignment, but they only allow submissions and for, for, until a certain date. For example, uh, lecturers allowed submissions on 25th June, but sometimes they can give you the work and allow submissions after a week, a week after giving you the work. So don't be surprised if you don't see the add submission button. That is because the lecturer has allowed submissions, given you an allowance of about two or three days to do the work. Then after that, the add submission button will show up. So uh, the, right now the add submission button is there. So you click add submission, and then you get to this page which allows you to submit the work. 
So here you you can add the file by clicking on this icon here. This is yes, this is the this is the standard add icon for for this platform. Alternatively, you can click on this uh, button that points down this arrow that's pointing down. So typically on a mobile phone. On a mobile phone, or when you click Add Submission, this is what you will get. So this is the same dialog that we have here. You still have this uh, this icon for adding, but for the mobile phone, typically you typically you'd click on this download arrow, and then it would open a file picker. This is a file picker which allows you to pick the file from your device from wherever you stored it. So in the file picker you always choose upload file. This is the second option here, upload file. And then it will it will bring a dialog to allow you to choose the file. So you click on some phones it will be saying browse file. In some it will be saying choose file, but it's all the same thing. So you to attach the file you click choose file. When you click choose file, it will it will bring this, this this dialog to allow you to pick. So you click files. This is where you access your file system. When you click files, you will be able to navigate. Uh, to, to, for example, I could go to to my drive. This is my drive, and I could go to where you've stored your work. Usually you do your work and store it somewhere on your phone. So this is basically what it's saying. Go to wherever you stored your work. Now my work is here, it's in PDF. I click on it and then it is picked. As you can see here, where it says choose file is come scanner, da 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 da, that's PDF. So the system has picked up my work. Then if my work is picked up, I click upload the file to upload the work. And you should also take note of these accepted file types. Usually the lecture will specify that they will only accept, for example, image files, PDF documents, and Word documents. So in this case, you won't be able to submit files which are not accepted. You won't be able to submit an MP3 or an mp4 file and if you try the system will, will tell you that you cannot upload that file type so i click upload and my work is uploaded as you can see it says here uh come scanner this is the name of the file so if the file is there and shows that it's there, then you have to save the work for the for the upload to be complete. Sometimes people forget to scroll down here. When they do this and then that is the end. You have to always make sure that you save. You go down to the very bottom and make sure that you pay attention to the dialogues that, that are there. So I click save changes. And after saving the changes, takes me back to the to the assignment page and here I can view my submission status again to see the changes that have taken place and as I can see the submission status says draft but not submitted so this means that my work has been saved as a draft it is on the system but it is not yet submitted it is not yet graded obviously and the due date is still on. So the due date is still on. I have eight days and 21 hours. My work is on the system, but it's a draft. If it's a draft, you should understand that it is not yet submitted. So if I scroll down here, I could see that in the submission comments, 
there are two comments. If I scroll, I see that the lecturer has responded to my submission comment. And they have said, uh, thanks, Namo TV. I would have sent you more documents, but because we are doing exams, please follow instructions stated in the first page. So <clears throat> this is something that's very important, the submission comments. You have to want to communicate to the lecturer, you use this. So as you can see, in case you have any queries, you, you can get help. So this is the submission status. As we see, we, st we have a draft. And at this point, we have the ability to edit the submission or remove it entirely. So I still have eight days and 21 hours. I can still make an improvement to my, to my uh, exam. So if I, if I need to, I can edit and put uh, an update. I click edit submission. Then I click this one and delete it. So when I delete it, I upload the update. I click, upload file, choose file. I go to my files. I look around for I go to upload that one. This is an updated one. And then I upload the file. So when I upload the file, I should always remember to save changes. And now I have submitted again. This is my file submission. And it also gives me a time stamp when I did this work. So I can be able to know if this is the, the latest or not. So when I am uh, ready to submit my work, I know this is my final work. I, I, I click on the submit assignment. So your work is still a draft until you submit it. So you should always remember to submit the work. I click Submit Assignment. When I click Submit Assignment, the system gives me a, a, a confirmation dialog here. This is the essay question, and this is the confirmation dialog. It says, this submission is my work, except we have acknowledged the use of the works of other people. Uh, then it says, uh, it asks, are you sure you want to submit your work for grading? You will not be able to make any more changes. So this is a warning that at this point you're submitting and after this, you will not be able to get your work back. That will be your submission. So if you're not quite sure, you can always cancel, but if you're sure this is your work and it's, uh, you, 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 you want to submit it, then you have to check this box here. And then click continue. So now the work is submitted, and you can see that the status has changed to submitted for grading. But it's also important to note that not all the time, it's not all the time that you're going to have the, the, the submission confirmation dialog. Sometimes a lecturer will save you that step, and when you click Submit, the work will go automatically. So in case you, you submit and you don't get that dialog, it is, it, is, it is fine. You just simply follow the prompt. The end point is that you have, let me go back to some of you, the end point is that you have the submission status changing to Submitted for Grading, and it's highlighted in green, as you see. So once you have submitted for grading and it has changed from draft, then you know that you are okay. Your work has been submitted. And typically when you submit your work, you get an email notification. Uh, let me go to my inbox. You get an email notification. 
as you can see here, this is my inbox and I've got a notification saying that you have submitted your assignment uh, submission for exam one cultural heritage. If I click on it, there are some details here and I can always go to that submission by clicking this, this button. But this is a very important email. It is sort of a receipt to show that you have submitted your work. And if you don't get this, then you you, you can actually uh, get get into contact with the ICT or the e-learning team and uh, we figure out why you haven't gotten that message. It's a very, very important message. And also, like Robert said, we, you are ideally supposed to have email addresses for Kabbalah University, email addresses of this nature that end in cab.se.ug. Very many of you registered your, your accounts with your personal Gmail addresses, and that is fine, they work. But for proper accountability, it is important that you get or activate. Many of you have your cover University email accounts, but they are not active. You're not using them. So it's important for you to get an account if you don't have one and activate your account if you haven't been using one. If you have challenges re uh, getting the password, you can always contact us and we do that for you. It would be good if everybody is using their Kabbalah University email address. So, so back here, if I refresh, I have my work submitted. And when you have your work submitted, the add submission button will go away. So you, at this point, you won't be able to, to, to make any changes to your work. You have submitted and it's, it's over. So now that our work is submitted, I go back to, to my assignment section. And as you can see, there's a tick here. This tick, uh, sometimes it can be automatically ticked for you to indicate that you have submitted the work, you've completed the assignment, and sometimes you, you will have to tick it as the student if it's not ticked. If it's not ticked and you know you've completed the work, you tick it. So that is uh, basically how you do an exam, an essay type exam, exam that is given in form of an assignment. So when your lecturers give you exams, you should ideally be able to identify using uh, by looking at this icon. You should be able to open the, the assignment or the exam. You should be able to to submit your work and interpret the, the this, this submission status, the due date, and the time remaining. So with that, ideally that is how an assignment is done. So we're going to go back and move to the next section, which is tests. So your lecturer can assess you using tests as well as assignments. So with tests, uh, typically with tests, what happens is that your lecturer sets a test. It could be uh, a test with um, multiple choice questions. It could be a test with multiple choice questions and essay questions. And uh, in the case of an exam, as you all know, with the exams, you don't get the feedback immediately, or you, sometimes you don't get the feedback at all, unless you have any queries. So we're going to look at, uh, first we're going to look at an example of a test, uh, exam two, computer literacy. This is a multiple choice question test. And there is a, there is a short description here saying this test will check your comp computer literacy skills. So a test could either be a test to test uh, basics or it could be an exam. So in this case, to do it, uh, first of all, to identify a test, you like we identified an assignment, it's a hand holding a paper. For a test, it's a paper with a tick in it. So this visually indicates a test. 
So to do exam two here, you click on it. Let me go to the phone. Let me see how it looks like on the phone. Let me return to, to the course. So on the mobile phone, in the, in the section of tests, this is how it looks like. I click on uh, the test computer literacy. So we have <clears throat> so we have a test here, uh, the description, and it tells you that you have one attempt allowed, and that is typical. Usually, for tests, you're given one chance to do it. There are situations where a lecturer can give you more than one chance, but usually it's one chance. So you have one temp, one attempt allowed, and the quiz is open for a particular time. Sometimes your lecturer can set, it will set a time that on 5th June, sorry, on 5th June you're going to have this test. So from 5th June, from 9 to 5 p.m., 9 a.m. to 5 p.m., the, the test will be open. If you exceed that time, then the test will not be available. You will not have this button that says attempt quiz. So below here we have time limit. It is also typical for a test to have a time limit. Once you start, the, 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 the test is available for a long period, but once you start attempting the test, you have a time limit of 10 minutes. So in this case, it's 10 minutes. So if I start my, my, uh, my test at 9 a.m., I'll have to, it will automatically end at 9.10. Nine, 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 uh, ten minutes past nine. Sorry. If I start at ten, then at, at exactly ten minutes past ten, the, the test will end. So to do the test, you click on attempt quiz now, and you get uh, you get this this dialogue here that uh, that as you attempt. Yeah, your attempt will have a time limit of 10 minutes. This is a reminder. When you begin to count down and cannot, uh, sorry, let me. When you start, the timer will begin to count down and you cannot pause. So once you start, typically like an exam, once you start, there is a counter that begins. And you cannot say that uh, you cannot pause. It will keep running until the 10 minutes elapse, and when the 10 minutes elapse, the test will end. So this is what it means. It cannot be paused. You must finish your attempt before it expires. So this is this is a question. Are you sure you want to start now? So you should always be sure that you are in position to do the test. If the test is, let's say, an hour, you should be sure that your battery, your phone battery, will take you for that whole one hour because if the battery goes off like it says you can't pause you're going to be interrupted so you must this is something to make sure that you're ready for the exam if your internet is poor you have to work work uh, work towards making it okay so that you don't get interrupted in the middle because the time keeps counting so if i'm ready for the exam I say start attempt. So now, this is how the attempt looks like. This is on a, on a computer and this one is on a phone. You have uh, question one. Uh, WW stands for World World Wave. So this is a multi. Uh, this is a, a a test which has multiple choice questions and true or false questions. So I respond to the questions. Okay, I say true. This is question one. This is question two. Uh, which device connects your computer to the internet? I answer. So you keep answering. And usually questions are laid out in pages, as we'll see. This is the third. What are these 
as images called question four how would you get this kind of window to appear question five so here we have five questions and we have a button that says next so in this in this quiz we have uh, more than one page and each page has five questions as you can see here on the desktop we have question one two three four and five answered but not saved yet they have been answered and there's this blue here which shows that they have been answered so when i click next it will go to page six all right i click next here So when I click next, these uh, these previous ones are, are saved. Then I answer the, the remaining ones. Question number six. Uh, screen button. Question number seven. So I have question number six, question number seven, question number eight. And question number nine, is it true or false? So I've answered until question number nine, and then I see here I can go to the previous questions in case, uh, the previous page in case I need to go through and, 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 and be more critical. In fact, let me do that, let me click. So when I click, what I have done in, in the second page is saved. If I refresh here, all right. Yes, so now I've gone back to the previous page by clicking that uh, button. Then below here, if you can see, the, the, we have something similar to this on the desktop, where you have all the questions from number one to number nine listed. And I can actually move to each number by clicking on these numbers here. I can go to number three by clicking here, and it will take me to number three. If I go back and I click number seven, it will take me to number seven on the next page. So here I am number seven. So as I can see, the work has been saved. What was light gray here, has now turned to dark gray. This is an indicator that the work has been saved. And then also I forgot to mention, as you can see here, there is a timer. It says time left is uh, five minutes and 34, 30, 32, 31 seconds. So that the, the, the time is counting. And it always shows you, this thing is always there. Wherever you move, it always shows you uh, the time remaining. This is the time remaining. If I go back to this page, it will still show me that I have uh, 5, 10, 5, 9, 5, 8 seconds remaining. So when I when I feel I am done with my test, I feel I am confident with my answers, I can either move to the next page, which is the last page. And at the last page, I have a button that says finish attempt. But even if I am on the first or second page, and I'm not on the last page, I always have at the very bottom, I always have the button that says finish attempt. And on the, on the desktop, you have the button here, always finish attempt. So when I click finish attempt, sorry. When I click finish attempt, I, I get a summary here. It says question one, two, three, and two, nine have all been saved. At this point, I still have an option to return to the attempt. And uh, I also have the option to submit an all and finish. So if I return to attempt, I'll go back and, because I still have three minutes and 49 seconds. But 
if I if I'm sure I want to submit my work, I could submit it at this point. I say submit all and finish. So when I click submit all and finish, I get the prompts again. Once you submit, you will no longer be able to change your answers for this attempt. And uh, that is what I want. I want to submit. If I if, I'm, if I still want to go back, I can click cancel. But really, I want to submit because my time is running out. So I click submit all and finish. I have now submitted my work. I've submitted my work and I have a status, my submission status here. It tells me I started on this date, 16th June at 10.48 a.m. and I finished. I clicked the submit button so I finished. The state is finished. I completed on, on, the, on the same day at this particular time and I took 6 minutes and 49 seconds. The test was actually 10 minutes, but I've taken 6 minutes and 49 seconds. And I've, I'm being shown my mark here. My mark is 6 out of 10. And uh, since this, this particular exam was out of 20, I have 60%. I got 12 out of 20, which is 60% out of 100. And the, the lecturer has put automatic feedback saying that I passed and uh, with this mark of 60% I have passed and the feedback is good work. So this is an example of multiple choice question test or exam where you get immediate feedback from the lecturer. Then also the lecturer has enabled me to review the questions, how I answered them. For example, question one, I answered true, which was correct. And there's some feedback here in yellow. Then uh, question two, I answered modem, which was correct. You can see there's a, there's a tick here that says correct. And this is the feedback. And question three, and now question four, this is the answer. I, I, I answered C, and I got it wrong. And I have uh, the feedback here. So it says your answer is incorrect, and the right uh, the right answer is here. Right clicking, da 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 da. So this is an example of multiple choice where you get immediate feedback. So I go through all the questions, seeing how I answered, and getting the feedback from the lecturer. And when I am done, at the bottom here, I have it shows me the questions that I attempted, and the green naturally indicates what I got right and the red indicates what I got wrong. So after the review, I say finish review. And uh, I'm taken back to, <coughs> to the test page. In the test page, I have uh, the only option I have is to view my summary and get to go back to the course. I've like in the beginning, it said, you have one attempt. I cannot be able to do this test again. So <clears throat> if I go back to, to the course, and I, and I scroll back to, to the test, I'll see that there is a tick. The tick is automatic. In some cases, it may not be automatic, and you'll have to check it yourself to indicate that you've finished the test. So that is how you do a multiple choice question test with, with, uh, with immediate feedback. So there's another uh, test here. It's the same test, but in this case, there is, it's, it's multiple choice. It's multiple choice uh, question test and also essay. An essay test is a test where the lecture requires you to write, not just to choose from options, but to write something, an essay. So let's quickly do this one so that you see. I click. And actually, before I go there, there is a fundamental difference. Uh, sorry, there is a fundamental difference between 
the a multiple choice uh, question test only and also one that has an essay because in this one like you can see you got uh, you get a summary of your marks as soon as you finish submitting you automatically given your marks like in this case i got 6 out of 10 which is 12 out of 20 when you have a test which when you have a test which has an essay question you usually don't get this feedback immediately because the lecturer has to go in and mark your essay question first before you can get a final mark so i want us to to see this when we do exam three so like like we did before this is the exam we have one attempt and it's, it starts at this time and ends at this time. It is 10 minutes. Time limit is 10 minutes. So we start, we attempt the quiz. We start the attempt. And we're going to, you now see the countdown has started. It's now 9.51, 9.50, 9.49. So the very first question here is the essay question. How can legal literacy help you as a student at the university? So this question requires you to write there's a there's a text box here so you write uh how digital literacy can help you as a student in university let me uh all right um i think it's uh So this is digital literacy can help. So you write as much as you can. Uh, question two. These are multiple choice questions. I answer them like usual. Um, let me just choose them randomly. Next page. Here we still have five five questions per page, so we go to the next page. And as, as we can see, our timer is still there. It's now seven minutes, 44, 43, 42. It keeps counting. Uh, so we are answering the reasons for yeah. it's number 10. So we are done, we click finish attempt. Then we get an overview of, of uh, our questions. They are all answered and saved from one to nine, from one to 10. Uh, we, are, we are ready to submit. We still have seven minutes and four, three seconds. So we are okay with, uh, with our work. So we submit all and finish. This is dialog for confirmation. We, we accept, submit. And uh, as we see here, we get a summary. We also have the ability to review the work. But you see, we only get the time we started the test and the state is finished, the time we completed the test and the time taken, which we've taken three minutes and 10 seconds. And we see here for that for the grade, we don't get a grade. So it's not yet graded. So we had some multiple choice questions which were marked automatically, but we still don't have a final grade. And that is because of the essay type question that is requires a lecturer to mark first before we can get a final grade. So the review here has question one, which we did. We can view it here, we can't change it, but we can view it. Then we have question two, which was marked automatically. We got it right, and this is the feedback. We got the second question wrong, this is the feedback. So for the multiple choice, true or false questions, we get automatic feedback for the essay. We have to wait for the lecturer to mark. So we have the final feed, uh, feedback here. See, this one is not yet marked, that's why it's gray. These others are either green or red. So this is, lecture has allowed us to review. And now we have to wait for the lecture to mark so that we get the final grade. 
So we, as you see here, the summary says not yet graded. Not yet graded. We can we can review. So we go back to back to our course and look at the third third kind of exam of test that we can we can do. And the third one is it's called uh, exam for general knowledge. And in this uh, test, the feedback is, is withheld. In other words, the lecturer doesn't give us any feedback. That is very typical of exams. In the exam, the lecturer doesn't give you feedback. So we click this one. And uh, we, we have one attempt. You see, we have one attempt. And this is when it opens and closes. And we have five minutes to do it. So we start the attempt. Start attempt. And the countdown starts for 54, 53, 52. So we answer uh, questions. Question number one, question number two. Uh, so this one has two questions per page, as we can see. We need, we're required to go to the next page. Question three uh, is the current speaker of parliament. Uh, so after answering these two, next page. I think we have one more question. Uh, so we have answered all the five questions. We still have four minutes and four three, two seconds, but we are really done. We are okay with our answers, so we finish attempt. And this gives us a summary of the answers from one to five. They have all been saved, answered and saved. So we don't return to the attempt, so we still have 3.43 and we want to submit, so we click submit and finish. We confirm the submission here. And now we get our summary. So this time we don't we 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 don't have the ability to review. The previous the two previous ones we could review the attempt, but in this one we don't have the ability to review, and we also don't have uh, our grade. We don't have our mark indicated here. So this is also something you should expect if you're given an exam. Chances are you won't be able to see your mark. If it's a test, you may be able to see your mark or be given uh, a chance to review your questions. But for an exam, this is what you will get. Just a summary that you finished uh, and you submitted on this particular day, on this particular time. But the, 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 what? the grades are withheld. So uh, I go back to the course. And uh, I think we have covered the three types of tests that you can get. We have also looked at an exam, which is given in form of an assignment. And ideally, I think the presentation is is done. Oh, uh, then there are also situations where I would like to demonstrate. So since most of you use mobile phones, I would like to demonstrate how you can scan your work. Sometimes you, you can be given your work to do. Sometimes it involves drawing or it involves uh, things that you cannot do in Microsoft Word. So you, you can be, uh, you can actually scan your work using your mobile phone. There is an application called uh, CamScanner. You can download it from uh, from from Google Play Store, I think also for Apple Apple users, you can also get either that application or something similar to that one. So with Scam Scam Scanner, you can scan something and have it stored on uh, on your phone, either as PDF or as an image. 
So you can scan your work, save it, and have it uh, as a PDF. So I'm going to uh, I'm going to scan some of my work here. I have my assignment. As you can see, I have my assignment here. Um, so I can scan here and tap. So it will get my work. I crop it here and go to the next. So that is page one of my work. So um, I take page two, I choose, then I snap, I can crop it so that it covers the whole work. And I go to the next. So that is page two, and then finally page three. Oh, Jesus. Page three, I, uh, I snap. And I crop it. So that it includes all the work properly. And I say next. So I've scanned my, my three pages of my work. Click PDF. And then with this PDF, you click on share up here. So this will bring the share options. What we want is to, to share, to save to local. So this allows you to save this file on, onto your, your phone. So you click save to local. And down here, it will indicate where it has saved the file. That was quite quick, but what it said Usually the, 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 the CAM scanner application creates a folder when you go to your files, in, the, in your file system. When you go to your files, you, uh, you go to internal storage. There is usually a, a, a folder called CAM scanner, this one here, CAM scanner. So this is where all these files are stored. So this here, if I open in in, uh, in Adobe or using any PDF reader, I'll see that I have my work there. Page one and two, three. So this, this is actually clear stuff. If I zoom in, I can see it properly. It's just because the phone has a small surface area. So, but it's very clear. So this, this, you can actually scan your work and upload it to, to the, oh yes, uh, it's also important for you to name it, because uh, right now you see it's named cam scanner zero da 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 da, which is not, which is not very helpful, but you can rename it. The option, uh, is an option when you click on these three dots, you get options and you choose to rename and you give it your your a logical name for example i say or exam exam it's called exam 1 stood Eleven zero four. So that is uh, something that is more logical. It will be easy for you to find and identify. Then you say okay. All right. So so now, <clears throat> so basically that's that's it. Uh, Robert wants to add something to that. Let me give him control. So um.
Now that we are here, I can see members have remained online, 175. The number has been around 180, 170. That's a good number. Now, most of you are saying we repeat the process. We're going to go through how you scan slowly this time round. But now the scanning is for those people who are doing, for example, the math, the chemistry. You need formulas and all that. If you are told to type them, most of you can't even type those formulas. So that kind of group which needs search uh, will be able to use the scanning bit of it. For us who have the S's, then we should be able to type it out. Yeah, type out our answers and then submit the typed file. But for those special course units where you need those complex formulas, calculations, you are able to do it on paper. It would be nice if you do it on plain paper where you can scan and you don't have lines and all that to distract you. Whether they are five or how many, just uh, write on them, then scan one by one. Uh, the CAM scan is able to, to make them into one document and for the order. But you know with the exam, the numbers may not matter as long as you know that you have written there your names, you've put there the question number that you are doing, then you do it, go to the next page. As long as you scan everything that has been the exam, don't say for go to scan the other one. Scan all of them, uh, join them. The CAM scan allows you to add. When you keep adding a page, add a page. You keep tapping, add another page, add a page, add a page. Once you're done, you complete. Then you go to the PDF uh, option up. Then you choose share. After choosing share, that's when you have save to local then that's how you're able to save it then go and rename it after renaming it um the next thing is that you you're able to upload it now to upload it to the exam section okay so what we're going to do is do not forget that whether you are going to type or write it okay you need not to, to forget to put your registration number course code it's very important we may not care about your name put the registration number to the top put the course code of the exam and upload the exam to the right one you'll find yourself having uploaded uh, for maybe one exam into another one and the other are submitted in a wrong one pay a lot of interest that's why i'm saying given the naming you name the exam with the with the course code so that you are sure that you are not putting it in the wrong one please remember that um so now i'm going to let mutebi uh, take you back to the scanning bit physics chemistry mathematics complex things that you may not be able to do in word uh, people of technical drawing and the rest if you okay there may be economics curves and all that those bits that you really need to do that you should be able to uh, you should be able to scan it out and then save it on your phone or laptop and then you should be able to um, upload it so i want michael to go through the process of scanning once again and the, the software is called cam scan it's one word cam c-a-m camera cam scan so that's the one that you use to scan the documents joins them up and into one file and you're able to send them as a pdf file um whatever you can take over now all right okay so now let me share the i'm sharing just the robot i think you can mute okay i'm sharing just the the, the mobile phone the mobile phone interface so, so it, it, everything is clear so, like I said, you go to the CAMSCAN application. It's a free application, which you can download on Google Play Store. So this is this is how it's like. You have this. This is what you use to snap. I click this, and then I go to to my document. So, like Robert said, you have to make sure that. You indicate your name and registration number. That's the most important thing. So they can easily identify your work. 
it's a good idea if you put the name and registration number on every page that you scan. And it should be clear, not like this one. This one's not very clear, but yours should be very clear. So I click, I put it in focus and I click. So the application will take a snapshot. And since it's properly cropped, as I can see here, I say next, this next button here. So it does the scan and I'm okay with it. So I click the tick here. Then I have an option to do an another page. Still I go, I, I click on the camera here and I scan the second page. This is the second page of my assignment. So then you can see this one in, in, in includes things that scribbles, things that you cannot do in Microsoft Word. If it's a diagram or formulas in mathematics, this is a an example. I snap. And I click next. This is fine, so I, I do the tick. So that's page two. And then finally, the third page. I tap and then I uh, I do the scan again. Then I go next. So I, I, I preview it and then I see it's fine. So I have my three my three pages scanned. And when I am done with the scanning at the very top here, there's this icon that says PDF. So you click on that. And then it shows the document in PDF, page one, two, three. Then here at the very top, I say share. So the option that I want in this share options is save to local. Click save to local. And it shows me here where it has saved. But it usually saves in the cam scanner folder. If I go to Even if I go to storage and I go to internal storage, there is this uh, cam scanner, it's in my internal storage. Cam scanner. When I open that. I will see my work here, the what I've just scanned. Let me it's either you see that the, the issue of naming is very important because now I cannot tell if it's this one or this one, but the other one which I renamed is quite clear. So let me open this one first. Yeah, so this is the right one. So now that I'm, I know it is the right one, I can go back here, then I rename it, tap, and I rename to something like exam, for example, exam two, uh, S-T-U-D, one one zero zero and then I say okay has it changed okay it has changed exam two so when you're uploading your work you simply go to this particular location in internal storage comes kind of folder and you pick your work and upload it uh, on the on the e-learning platform so I think that is clear And uh, I think I should hand over to to Robert to, to summarize. Okay, thank you, Michael and Nicholas. Um, Nicholas has been on the chat trying to ensure that he's answered your questions. Um, Michael has made a very good presentation and um, now, um, what we expect of you 
is to go and practice. That course is open for you to practice in those exercises. It is open for you to try out this scanning, whatever it is, please uh, do it, try it out and see how it works. Get used to it, rename the file etc. While you have challenges, we are going to actually um, share this video, the, this training here, so that people can always go back in the part which they are um, they're interested in to be able to, you know, to refresh their mind on how to do something. So we are going to compile this uh, audio and video and then be able to share it, okay? I think we shall try to give it to some people and your student leaders so that they're able to give it to you. Or we'll put a link on our e-learning platform to that training. Actually, I'm going to put a link and that video on the e-learning platform so that you are able to access it. Before you log into the e-learning platform outside, we have some videos. So we should be able to put this video as well in the meantime so that you're able to access it and go through that training. Um, yeah, practice makes perfect. So go ahead, try to practice. Um, if there's a course where you can't enroll, let us know. We shall be able to open it up for you. And I thank everyone, all the students that have attended. Those that didn't attend, maybe you'll tell them that we're going to put this video on uh, the e-learning platform so that you are able to find it and catch up with what they missed. Um, uh, Nicholas, if you have something to say to these uh, members here, please do as we close out. Thank you so much, everyone. Thanks for attending. Nicholas, please say something and we close. Yeah, thanks so much for everyone who has been in attendance uh, during this session. I've got a chance to interact with the majority of you, though some of you are sharing repetitive uh, questions. I tried as much as possible to, to answer. Uh, to some, I would uh, text directly whenever I see that something may be not good for, for the others. I shared the email addresses for me and my other colleagues where you can reach out to us. I ask you where you have a challenge, just share there and there. We shall be able to respond. If we don't respond to you, maybe uh, later at night, we can try as much as possible to respond uh, during the morning hours. But um, we also have the help desk system as uh, uh, Mr. Robert had already said, helpdesk.com. .sc.ug. You can also channel your inquiry through there and we shall be able to follow it up and resolve it. Uh, thanks so much once again for your attendance. We are always looking forward to helping out whenever there is need. Thank you.